Okay, uh, another very good bait that we do make with crab or three spotted uh, swimming crabs. Unfortunately, I don't have one of them. I've got the next best thing here. Um, is for our pig nose grunter, um, basically stiambras as they call it down in the Cape. What we require to make this trace is basically 25 kilo kingfisher nylon. Uh, this will be a bigger swivel than I normally use. It's a 4 by 5 power swivel. A 8 0 ringed soy, silver in color. You can go onto the black one, but because you're fishing on a sandy bottom, which is normally very white, I prefer to stick to my silver hooks or white hooks. Cone sinker, latex cotton, chocker hammer, knife, pair of scissors, and of course our swimming crab. The one that I'm referring to has actually got two spikes on either side of him. He burrows in the sand, very hard to come by on the high tide, so you've got to catch him on the low tide. And um, if you put a sardine out in the water with a little peg, you'll find three or four of them normally around it. Grab them, they do bite, but they've got those long spikes on them and they are a lot whiter than this crab. So just bear in mind, this is not the ideal crab to use for those pig nose grunter that I'm going to be doing, but it's about the same size as the, the crabs that we get down there in East London and further south. Okay, to make the trace, very, very simple. I'm going to be using about 500 uh, lengthwise, about 500, 50 centimeters. My ring soy. And again, all I'm doing is just tying a figure of eight onto the actual hook. Open him up. There's your figure of eight. A little bit of lubrication always helps and slide the hook down so you don't burn the nylon, pull tight, cut off the tag ends. Okay, again it's a very simple three-way trace that I'm making. Once again with a power combo, remember the big one goes to the top, the one arm that goes off to the left or the right doesn't really make a difference, that one there is your sinker one and of course the bottom one is where the hook is attached to. The reason being is when you are pulling or fighting a fish, it's always better, well your swivel is stronger if it's in a straight line, it's as simple as that, just to show you quickly. If that swivel, and obviously your leader goes onto the big one, is in a straight line, it retains most of its strength, okay, compared to coming off on the arm, and I have a lot of people asking me why do you not tie onto that little one that's over there. Simply, much stronger to have it in a straight line. Okay, so let's just do this quickly. Cut off the end there. You can use the same breaking strain nylon as you are for the hook snoot. Same length as well. Preferably a cone sinker because you are fishing on sand and you don't want to move too much, especially in the Eastern Cape where you've got those rolling white banks and that, where you're looking for your pig nose or steernras, as they call it, steernies, <coughs> again just figure of eight guys, nothing fancy, pull tight, cut off, and like I said the arm that comes off is where we attach our sinker to, and again what we're going to do is measure it to make sure that both baits are about the same length, which is perfect. Two, three. Again, I'm working in the air. I should actually be working down here. Here we go. Figure of eight, lubricate, slide. Nothing fancy about that. I'm trying to measure and make sure my, my length of my trace is about the same. There we go, which is absolutely perfect for what we want to do. Okay, now we've got our trace made. Let's start playing with our bait. There's our crab. There's two ways of doing it. You can either use the whole crab if you want. Um, the only difference with the whole crab is that I would actually take off the top shell. Uh, generally there's a lot of tobies, puffer fish, puffies as they call it in the Eastern Cape. So we like to keep the shell on if there's a lot of those little uh, peckers around. A good strong knife is recommended. Not a short little flimsy knife like this. Very simply what we do that one has got a very hard shell. 
It's not like our ghost crabs like, that we get in the Natal. It is extremely hard. So we just take chocker hammer and our crab. I'm just going to put this one on top. I'm just going to use the hard part or the bigger teeth on our chocker hammer. Just to break the shell. That's all I'm trying to do is break the shell, get a bit of smell going. So the hard part, the sharper teeth part of it. And what we do is we just go like that. You see I've just broken it. And just lightly tap it. And if I've done it properly, I should be able to cut him down the center. Okay. That big pincer over there, again, hard side of the actual chocker hammer, the bigger teeth part of it. And it's just to get more of the smell going. There's a lot of um, flesh in there. You can see there's a lot of uh, meat in that. I just want to take him down a bit. There we go. And you can see what I try and do is just take a little bit more off of it. That's okay. Okay. Again, all we're going to do, let me just put this over here so you can see what's going on. And that part, I'm away. So what I do is basically take the hook, lay it underneath, and remember this is a white crab that we're using, so it might look a little bit odd as it's sitting here, being a brown crab, latex cotton, this is the Kingfisher latex cotton, and I like to use the thin latex cotton for this, just because it's less obtrusive in the water, especially in the Eastern Cape where you're fishing and the water is very, very clean. So all we're doing is just binding it up. And it does look messy. Believe me, it is when you're actually doing it. Like that. Take the other part of it. Just breaking off the one pincer. And I'm just going to quickly do this again. I don't want to damage that too much. Again, just take that and just soften him up a bit. Okay, so there's the second part of the crab. <clears throat> and we turn it upside down. So we've got the white side facing to the top. And again, all I'm going to do, there we go, latex cotton. And we just bind it up. What this does, when you put it with the belly side, if I can call it the underside up, it doesn't allow the tobies to get to it or the puffer fish to get to it. And just go like that. You can see on both sides what it looks like. So it's a very smelly bait at the moment with a lot of ooze and blood and that coming out of it well i say blood i'm talking about all this juice that's coming out of it it's softened up quite nicely that's basically what it looks like at the end of the day the whole made up baited trace so now the tobies can come and eat a little bit of the flesh there create a bit of movement in the water it also attracts the pig nose grunter to the bait there's a lot of smell coming and dropping out of that as it stands at the moment but it is hard enough on the bottom side that the peckers can't get to it or the smaller tobies can't get to it on both sides but there's a lot of smell a lot of flesh on the inside of this you can throw it as hard as you want it's not going to come off and what you're looking for are those rolling white banks with troughs so a bank and a bank and the rolling white water that's coming off of it, that's where you want to fish for these pig nose grunter, steam brass. Uh, basically guys, that's it. It's a very simple, easy bait. You can also add chocker to the inside of this actual bait, just to give it a lot more smell in that. Okay, remember to hit the chocker so it's very, very soft and spongy, so the little particles come off. 
it creates a little bit more smell in the water but that for pig nose grunty is absolutely deadly 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 there we go guys